I'm Smithy, this is my con Tiki, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. So today's video, we're going to find out how you can park a 22 foot motorhome in a town or a city. If you've already got a 22 foot motorhome, you'll know the struggles that you have. But anyway, I've got some solutions for you. Yeah, this is what you're up against. When you're trying to park in a town, the barriers, this, this first car park, you'll see that barrier. You could actually get in the second one, but they have the ability to lock you in. Um, and the second, this one now, you can see you've no chance. You, 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 you just can't get in there. So, and they've done that on purpose just to stop big vans getting in there and people camping overnight. So this is why you have to find supermarkets or like I do, if it's a strange place and I don't know it and I can't find a Sainsbury's or an Asda or whatever, park on the outskirts and recycle in, depending on the weather and things like that. But And that's, that's the way we do it. So if you're visiting a seaside town, seaside towns can be quite good to park because um, they've, uh, they've got something that you can, uh, do you know, any hard work back in these videos. <laughs> right. So if you go to a seaside town, the promenade is a great place to park in in a few of them. Some of them you have no chance. Uh, Blackpool would be a good example. You will never park a motor on Blackpool promenade. Other places, not too bad. So, what's the answer? So, if you're visiting a town or a city, we put two bicycles on the, our bike rack on the back and that's why we'll park on the outskirts, a lay-by or wherever, uh, and then cycle into town. And that's why I made a video of getting the uh, the dog trailer because we have two dogs. The small chihuahua can go in Sue's basket on her bike and the bigger one can go on in the trailer on the back of my bike. Uh, and that's how we travel into a town or a city. And uh, you can park the bikes up, lock them up, take the dogs on a lead and, you know, two of the town. Uh, but otherwise, supermarkets are your best bet. Find a supermarket. Not so much Aldi and Lidl, although you could try them. Because some of them have barriers on and you're only allowed an hour because they're a small store. If you find a bigger store, as the Morrison Sainsbury's, usually they allow up to three hours. Sometimes you have to buy, you know, you get a ticket for free and then you have to purchase a receipt and on your way out you show it to somebody. Although our local Morrison's don't do that anymore. You just, you just park up three hours. Uh, they have a camera that detects you going in and coming out. So as I'm going in uh, Morrison's, where to park uh, or Asda, you're usually going to have to park as far away as possible from the front door because car drivers are absolutely idle. They will park it on the front door if they could. So the space, uh, the further you get, the, the easier it is to park. So don't try and get near the door, park out of the way. And usually when you park out of the way, you'll find you're parking next to expensive cars. And the reason they park out there is because they don't want anybody damaging the car and driving off, which happens all the time. So look for a, a space out of the way. Now you'll see this, where I park, if I find another motorhome in a car park, I'll park next to them. Or within reason, you know, I'll give them a bit of room, but I'll try and park as near as I can to them. I wouldn't do that if I was camping all night, I would find my own spot. Or, or if you can't, then you obviously you park there, but not too near. Use a bit of discretion. The reason you, I, I've parked next to this motorhome in this car park is purely because the safety in numbers. So as I walked away from my motorhome, I've took a photograph of it, well, a video. Uh, the reason that I've parked there is purely because if anybody's walking past and sees their motorhome, they can look through the window. But if you see two motorhomes, you could be together and there could be somebody in one of the vans, obviously watching both vans. Now, when I've come back, that first motorhome at the side of me I've parked next to has gone and another one has turned up and he's parked near me. He obviously can't park next to me because there's a car there, but he's parked behind me. Um, and he's done the same as me. And so if you're parking up in a, in a supermarket car park and there's another motor truck, get next to him or, or as near as you can. There's safety in numbers. And if you talk to him, hey, pal, you're all right. They'd be the friendliest people possible, motorhomes. Anyway, so that's the reason why I've parked where I've parked and chose the spot that I've, I've, I've chosen. So then you've got three hours to two of the town. And if it's got another supermarket, drive from that one to the next one, you've got another three hours. That's six hours in a town. And most towns, if they're large enough, they have a Sainsbury's, Morrison's, as they have them somewhere. Um, so that's why I chose where I was. So I hope some of that helps you in deciding what type of van you're going to get or the size of van you're going to get. Remember, it, everybody wants the biggest van they can afford. But there's restrictions on everything that you buy, on size-wise. If, you, if you've got a big American dream motorhome, you'll never drive that round Wales and Scotland, ever. So, one like mine, you'll struggle, but you'll do it. Um, but uh, 
you know, if you're looking at a weekend van, parking overnight somewhere, get a smaller van. And if you're not bothered about cycling into a town and or parking on the outskirts and whatever, get one like mine. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the tips. And uh, if you want to know any more about this jacket, that's another video coming up. Anyway, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.